We're less than 24 hours away from crowning a PBR team's champion in Las Vegas. Six teams remain in the hunt for the title, but only four will be standing when the dust settles inside T-Mobile Arena tonight. It's ride or go home in the hard-hitting battle of bull riding. You want to see tough? Watch this. Once it starts counting down like this, the judges cannot stop the clock. There's the nod. Let's ride. Oh! Jeremiah's just had it taken to him, but he was putting it all on the line, and you thought, okay, Freedom, here we go. Exodus, though, he doesn't care what game it is or who's on his back. Well, one thing we have to talk about in this scenario is when you get put on the clock like that and then you have to rush your nod, that bull wasn't necessarily looking the proper way. He kind of gets tangled up when he leaves there, and that's what sets up this whole ride for this bull to not have his usual day and kind of travel out through there, and, and that's a hard one to handle. A bit of conversation there with head coach Corey McCoy and Jeremiah's on the dirt. It took a while for Kodiak to go to the left, but it was right into the wheelhouse of Vieira and the Rattlers are rolling. With age comes patience. And this is a bull ride that's all about patience. As you can see, when this bull travels out through here, just waiting and waiting, and he's expecting him to turn a little quicker than he does, but he just goes out through there, patience, until he comes to it. Ride or buck off, Vier is one of those guys that always seems to smile when he's walking out on his own two feet, but that look right there, he even knew that that was not a for sure bet. Yeah, there were some times there where things got a little bit dicey. I don't know, like the first couple of jumps out there when we all expected that bull to turn back, but you said it, patience. The veteran just remained calm, followed the path to victory and 84 and a half points for Texas in that one. Let's hope that Casey's back ready to go. Roberts rides him. Every move you need to make, you just saw it in eight seconds. That is, that is a gamer's mentality right there. Forget about anything, just show up in. I mean, absolutely go with an aggressive mindset. And that was the key for Casey Roberts in this one. Take a look at this Can-Am, Kim. He had to stay aggressive in every move he made. He did, and that's exactly what it is. It's not always going to be pitcher perfect, but if you put out the try and the determination, and right here, he just refuses to quit and shovels his hips forward in that. That's a really good bull ride. They need that to stay in this game. Oklahoma's not going to make it easy on the Rattlers. I think there's some feelings here. We'll see in spot number four. You put Vass Binder in Vegas, and he rides. Other side of the arena right now used to have him, and they might be wishing they had him back, but that guy right there is happy to have Vass Binder, happy to have another score, and happy to take the lead in this one. I guarantee you there's no better feeling than riding a bull in Vegas, but to top it off, riding one against your former teammates and showing what they lost. 86 and a quarter, and Texas takes the lead back. It's not going to be the biggest score we see here tonight, but it is a big score for Eli in the sense that he does prove that he belongs in a starting lineup, and he's helping his team get the lead right now. We, it's, this is a good game so far. It, it could still go anybody's anybody's way. Cord McCoy's sitting there wondering, well, what might have been? They had Vassbinder here in Vegas. Gets them the win here, but Daniel Keeping wants to make it three tonight. Keeping comes down again. And Webb, did I catch that right? Did he just go through your legs as you were also trying to uh, keep smooth steel? I thought we were getting run over, boys. <laughs> okay, that's as close as you can get without getting burned. 
<laughs> I'm all the way up here at the broadcast desk, and it felt oh, too close, Webb. That is way too close, Kate. But, you know, when them, get, when them guys come off on the inside of the well right there, a little bullfighting one-on-one is the fact you have to cross their face. Luckily, he didn't want us. Wow. I said MVP one night ago. Ooh. Now we're just adding highlights to Are Webb's you MVP reel. Me? This is, it's ridiculous how good these guys are. It's, it, What's crazy is he's still, next to Kate, the best broadcaster we have on this whole team as well. I mean, the guy's just, he's too good for his own good. You've seen this in prior years. It recalls the likes of some big rides. Doherty delivers, hanging on the side. It's a ride for the Ridge Riders. And again, it comes with a cost. He took a shot, guys. I mean, it, it, there could not be a better time for him to be as locked in as he is, but this is not good. Looking at Chase Doherty being helped out of the arena, you can see Colby Yates, his coach, he goes from celebratory excitement to pure fear because it, it was a nasty shot that Chase Doherty took as that bull's back legs came down towards his what looked like his upper chest his his shoulder area I couldn't really tell from this vantage point but you can see he's he's talking to the guys but still some scary moments here <laughs> always good advice when you hear one of the teammates say you're a cowboy you've got it that tells me that's a good initial indication from over there. And there you see Chase Doherty getting up to his feet. Dr. Tandy Freeman, our sports medicine team. Absolutely the best in the business. And so great to see Chase up. Again, it's going to be a score. Not going to be the biggest score, but it's a score nevertheless. The one thing that separates great bull riders from average bull riders is the willingness to do whatever it takes at any cost to get a score and that's exactly what he did nothing about this is proper bull riding but at the end of the day he put a score on the board for his team and he needed to because here comes kansas city as sandro batista gets set loves to watch can sandro getting done Legend just proved why he's a fan favorite. And then after the buck off thought, let me just go see all my fans for a minute, say hello. One more, one more lap around T-Mobile. That bull is so much fun to watch from a fan's perspective, but from a guy that's been on the back of him watching this Bass Pro Shops replay, what do you think? Is he a bull that uh, bull riders would like as much as the fans? When we talk about bucking bulls like that, any bull that you can stay on, you like the ones that get bucked <laughs> off you don't like but a bull like that has so much hang time when you set your hips you're expecting them to hit the ground before they do and you're waiting and you're waiting and then all of a sudden you're like why isn't he hit the ground and then he hits it and usually by that time you're behind huge bull score too for legend 46 and three quarters that is the second best we've seen all season the best we just saw one night ago man hater posted a 47. Last game, he had the toughest bull. He was undefeated. Now, he's got one. It should be all day. And it's just that. Can you make it look any easier than what Eduardo just did? Here come the Ridge Riders. And that all stems from yesterday. The confidence he has and the bull that he rode yesterday. This was a day off for him for six seconds. But all of a sudden, this bull switched it up and went back the other way. And without the confidence and knowing of the ride that he had yesterday, he could have stubbed his toe, but he didn't. Beginning of the season, this move doesn't get made. He never gets back around that corner and, and flourishes through that direction change. But now he does and the Arizona Ridge Riders are two for two with that score for Eddie. They had to take down the gold buckles of Carolina to advance to Saturday. Wow. Quickly Ford slung to the side. 
Machado comes down aboard Hellstorm. That's exactly what it looked like. Not the Leandro Machado I expected to see here tonight. No, not even not even close. We've come to expect a lot more from him than that. And and that is a mistake. You know, we we have to just call it what it is. And that was his mistake, because that's a bull that of his level and his caliber, he rides 99% of the time. And took a shot. You saw a sports med attending to him there in the steel. Kansas City needed that. One slips right through Ferreira's fingertips. I don't know what to say. It, it, <laughs> This is, is really shocking to me because I really thought Kansas City was going to come in and ride at least three bulls. And in situations like this, especially like High Plains Drifter, this is a bull they ride a lot. But it all started right from the bucking shoot where everything was just not the way. You could tell he never felt comfortable. That bull never gave him a great shot, but he gave him a shot where he had to compensate. Oh. And that's what he wants to do. Luke, it can't be an inside joke. What are you laughing with Coach about? No well, secrets. We're just sitting yeah. up here on the buck and shoes. Kind of an awkward position for this interview, but uh, <laughs> man, Coach Colby, what an effort that your team has put out. We'll start with Chase Doherty. Hung on, hanging on the side of the bull, keep the momentum and get the momentum for your team. That That's a huge moment for everybody, especially, especially Chase, because he's had some moments where he got a little bit weak, but we've been working hard with Chase. I mean, if he believes in himself, that's what he can do every time. I and mean, he's really hard to get on the ground uh, if he believes and he stays focused and we love having him in that number one spot you know Nick Tex was that one guy but he's sitting out here because um, of injury and Chase Doherty's filled that position very very good well congratulations on the win tonight looking forward to tomorrow thank you we do too appreciate it I bet he does how can you not Clockwork Kid gets that first ever ride in Las Vegas. I think it's a great idea by J.W. Harden. It kind of goes back to what we talked about last night. Things haven't been going your way. You need one little bright spot of hope to carry that momentum into that next game that you're going to need everybody to step up with. Absolutely. I, I couldn't have said it better. It's all about momentum, and they can't end this game without a win of some sort. It's a small win, but it's a win. And now they can take this in to this next game and maybe redeem themselves. I know you can't change it, but we can talk about it because they've got to play another game in about 45 minutes. Why did you not have Winkson De Silva in when he is your second best producer on the team behind Diaz? Flint said he was healthy. You saw him back there pulling ropes. You got to think they're putting Winkson into that lineup, don't you? Locked and loaded. They might be the number eight team in the league, but right now they're on top against Austin. Look at Missouri. How awesome is that? It just keeps, it's a domino effect, and especially when you're a young kid like this, when things start rolling, it's amazing. And Luke standing right there. Hey, Cade, that was one heck of a ride to start your team off. We talk about momentum carrying your team into the next four rides. That was huge. Yep, there's nothing better than that for you. Shoot, we're feeling it right now. Uh, I knew that they could, that the team needs to feed off me, and it was on me to get a start in the right direction, and just let... Let him hang. Congratulations. I love it. So the kid did know how much pressure there was in that number one spot and how important his ride was. 86 and three quarters on the board. I have this. You cannot let that other team get momentum after what we saw last night. He calms down early. Now, if you're an Austin Gambler fan, 
You're nervous. And I don't like the way that Dalton Castle is leaving this arena because I, I, I got a feel, and I'm not down there, but I got to feel like the rest of the team is feeling the same way his body language is telling me he feels. Absolutely. When you're one of the leaders in the locker room, one of the guys that everybody else looks up to and leans on, and then all of a sudden you're deflated, you deflate the whole team but, without even knowing it. But... J.J. Gotch has done a great job in putting the pieces of the puzzle in the right places. And at different points of the season, they've had other guys step up. That's a great shot right there. Jose Vitorlemi telling his buddy, hey, it's okay. We've still got this. Yeah, and they're really happy with the way, obviously, Felipe has been right. And so is Flint with his matchup. How quickly the tides can turn. Yeah. But you're gonna, yeah. There's a red flag on the ground. That is a automatic re-ride. And as you saw the red flag, you also saw the entire U.S. Border Patrol Protection Team going to work down there. Hey, that's I had a it. Close-up <laughs> web of a uh, nice footwork. That's good, clean fun right there. <laughs> is that what you guys call fun up here at the desk? Yeah, being anywhere near these athletes down on the floor like that, no, nothing fun about it. <laughs> I've been I've been close enough where we're standing right here. So Missouri will get another attempt there. They still have four attempts remaining. And yes, it was a buck off, but remember they got a re-ride. But Look. what about this action that happens after the flag throws? Cody Webster, Lucas Teodoro, Nathan Harp, but how good are these guys? Cody, you got a smile on your face. You have the best team in the league in the U.S. Border Patrol Bullfighters. Well, I'm not going to lie about it, Matt. It's, it, it feels good to be feeling good. You know, after the ankle injury yesterday, the first pull out, no one really noticed it, but Lucas Teodoro took a big rock right to the eye and ended up scratching that eye really, really bad. So he's basically fighting on one eye right now. Nathan Hart's about the healthiest man we got, but I tell you what, teamwork keeps it rolling, rolling right into this next ride. Cody, you guys look incredible. Keep it up, buddy. Santos does exactly what he needs to. That's a great shot right there because you see that the rest of the Austin Gamblers franchise have not given up. They're not as let down as we might might have thought they would be. They're still alive and still in it. And Rafael Dos Santos getting it done in a big, big way. And this is an outstanding ride. Let's not forget, you want to talk about a bull that's going to turn back right in the gate, break over, kick, and then throughout the ride, goes to him and gets those extra points. That is an outstanding bull ride. Dos Santos was a free agent. Lemmy told us earlier this week, and I could not believe he was a free agent. I went straight to our front office and said, you've got to get this guy in. At the perfect time, he steps up. Good luck at JJ Gotch, who puts all the passion into this. And now Lemmy's thinking, okay, we've got the lead. We step up and do what I like to do right here in Las Vegas. But that can all change in eight seconds. Alvidrez aces this one. Direction change it all. Erase all the buck offs. All that matters here is Missouri's back in the lead. UFC Hall of Famers in the house. UFC owner has the bull, but it's Andrew Alvidrez that delivers the knockout punch on this one. Big time scores coming up for Double A. A heavyweight and a lightweight. Who should win every time? Who wins this one? This bull has action, travels out through there, and he just sits down, keeps his shoulders square, never overrides, never underrides, right through the changeup. You talk about bull riding now, that's one right there. Alvidrez hasn't found the whistle since back in week number eight. He's been frustrated, he's been searching, and now he's the one to get Missouri back in the lead. 
in its 88 points awarded for the effort. Earlier today, Andrew Alvidra is hanging out with middleweight champ of the world, Sean Strickland, Hall of Famer Don Fry. I mean, they got all the UFC good mojo going on that one. That was a big one for Double A. The world champ does it again, and this time it's to do what he could not do one season ago. It is to lead his team to championship Sunday. Look out, league. Lemmy is locked in. And the Austin Gamblers now look like the title contenders we've talked about all year long. It just takes their MVP stepping in, getting 89 big ones, taking the W away, getting the win, getting everybody on their feet, and they win this one. And it's plenty of points, 89, and Lemmy is standing by with Flint. You know, uh, you love the pressure situations, Jose, but uh, this is this one's just got to be a relief coming in off a bye. That's a tough Missouri team over there that gave you a test. Oh, yes, for sure. It's always hard when you compete against a good team. And all the teams here, they have a good, good guys, good riders. Uh, another situation that I, I had to ride my bull. That's not fun. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, but that I use that to motivate me, you know, give me more strength to do my job. And God is always blessing me on this moment. So I'm just so thankful. Congratulations. The hair still looks good. Thank you. <laughs> MVP, proven why he's just that. He's done it all season long. He does it again here in Vegas. It's the same arena his career started in, and it's the same arena he continues to shine in. First time they met up. Yeah, rode him for 89 and a half. That is the Kansas City we usually see. De Silva does it. Aboard flying wired, and guess who is flying high now in Vegas? Doesn't matter how you get there, all roads lead to a title, even if you got to take the long way around, and that's what Kansas City's trying to do right now. You want to talk about a bull rider's dream in a bucking bull. When you ride this good and get on a bull like this that leaps that high in the air, makes just about a 180 degree turn in the air with all four feet off the ground, and you ride one that good, this is what bull riding's all about. And off the bench, we saw so much from De Silva beginning midway through the season, but he had one out in Glendale, one out in Fort Worth, comes off the bench here, and he does it for 92 and a half. That is big time stuff, and that right there is showing you why J.W. Hart is so invested in this guy and why they wanted him, why they went out and got him. They put him up to the task, and, and he answers the call. The story of De Silva and Flyer, Flying Wire goes even deeper, though. So when he rode him before for the 89 and a half, that was back at the World Finals. Remember, De Silva was right there going toe-to-toe -to -toe the whole time for that title. Finished fourth, but this was the bull that got him all the way to Championship Sunday. Now it could be the bull that gets his team to Championship Sunday. But he comes down at just two and 77, and he is hurt. <laughs> Quickly, the U.S. Border Patrol protection team made sure Eric the Red got out of the arena, and now the sports medicine team uh, coming over to the steel to attend to Roberts. Yeah, I mean it, it, very slow to get up, but I'm um, looking at him standing on his feet, and that's always a good sign. Go back and watch it. This last chance game is no slouch, and I think that he, he just came down that impact. He, he hit face first, that face mask, and you know that sometimes just that impact can kind of rattle a guy's cage, if you will. 
And Webb is we're seeing Roberts make his way out and the fans now showing a sign of appreciation. Well, one thing right there, Kate, to point out is the fact that, you know, all night long these bulls have been coming in and out of these buck and shoots. The gate man, everybody's walking right here for about two feet off those buck and shoots. It is as hard as concrete. I mean, and there's no way around it other than, you know, it, it's just going to happen. Well, and these guys in this last chance game at the end of the night, they're hitting the ground right there, and it, it literally feels like concrete. So when they're hitting, I mean, you see Kate takes a bad shot right there, face mask first. Uh, just thankful he's getting up and walking out, and the crowd is relieved as well. And there's a look at the starting lineups from Missouri. The first name you saw, Felipe Furlong. It's Furlong and Flapjack doing the dance in Vegas. And what a dance to eight it was. You saw the starting lineup. You saw the guy was leading them off, and you saw the guy that stepped up right away. He's been doing it all weekend. Guys, surprise, surprise, Felipe Furlong is the real deal when we get to Las Vegas. You know what I love about this team right now with Missouri is when they come in, they were so far behind, they thought they were winning first and they've turned it into that. They realize they have the ability and they have the talent. And with rides like this, they are definitely still in this. Hey, look at what we're seeing here, guys. We've seen two of the biggest scores we've seen all season long, and it came from a game that was comprised of teams that lost earlier tonight. Are you kidding me? So Missouri gets on the board, 90 points. First time these two are matching up. Oh! He was there jump for jump. Webb and EOS Border Patrol Protection Team go to work. Blown away goes away. And now you're seeing the challenge as Diaz also comes to the side. We've watched Cassio Diaz limp out of this arena for weeks now. The toughness this kid has shown us is, it's incredible. Wow, what oh. contact. Helmet to the horn. Why do you see they threw the flag here, Scott? Well, I'm, I'm trying to watch when this bull leaves, there's a rope there and they're double checked to make sure it didn't affect it anyway. And see, you can just see right here, just that rope there looks no like foul. maybe, no foul, guys. you know, I think they're just kind of digging and, and trying to hope they can get it a rewrite because that's a guy that you, even though he's a little beat up after taking a hit like that, that's not a guy that any of the other teams want a second chance to get on one. And then the contact here. Oh, you see the way the head snaps over the front end of that horn. And, and a guy that's been battling a groin injury, he's been banged up, but a guy that every bull riding fan in the world better be paying close attention to every time we see his name in the lineup. Yeah, if you're Oklahoma, I mean, you've got a couple of guys. Him and Alton Cercada. Put that buck off in the rear view mirror. Bunch is back. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's all I can say about what we're seeing right here, right now. Caden Bunch has had a coming out party all season long. No doubt about it, kid's a gamer, he's a star, and he's stepping up here, his team needs him, he gets it done. What impressed me about this ride is the first two jumps, he is loose and very uncomfortable. His body weight is too far forward, his feet are wanting to come, and he refuses. He just shovels his hips, gets sat down, and then once that bull comes to his spot, it is game over for a big score. We've talked all season long about how talented he is, but he just proved to us yet again that he's willing to sacrifice the work and put it out there. Job well done, young man. Those are the ones that you always remember, and those are the ones that fuel their fire. Don't quit now, 
Kansas City. Colton Hevelo just put another one on the board. I love this kid. I am such a fan of Colton Hevelo. And I think we have yet to get close to seeing the best version of this kid. I think he's got such a tremendous upside. I love the swagger he'll have at the end of a ride like that. Great job, kid. As he takes a bow on the biggest stage in bull riding. Look at that, getting you right down on the dirt floor level, getting inside there. Kid makes a great ride. It's camera shots like that that make people appreciate how there is actually finesse in bull riding. It's not just sit, hold on, grit your teeth. It's all about shifting your body weight. It's incredible. Incredible. And look at the reaction of Cade Madsen for the first time this year. It looks like the kid knows he's that good. And make, that's scary. Make no mistake, he belongs here. And I think right there, Matt, just like you said, he knows it now. He needs 89 points to take the lead away from Kansas City. gets it 90 points they've been in the basement all season and here they are again now taking the lead in the last chance game you think there's not a lot of people enjoying what Missouri's doing and the show that they're putting on I, I, Kate Madsen is a star in every sense of the word and he just showed the entire world that you got to pay attention He hung on to the whistle, but the clock stopped at six. They won a challenge. Yeah, but I don't, I, look, I hate to say this, but I don't think a challenge does you any good here. I mean, I mean, there's, there's nothing to gain from this. It is what it is in this moment, unfortunately. But the one thing that there is also to take away from this, Julio Cesar Marquez, fits right in to the fold for the Kansas City Outlaws. The effort, that all grit, no quit, these guys have shown us all season long, and that's why if you're not a Kansas City fan, you're missing out because this is a team that has sure been fun to watch. And there, there's nothing worse than losing, but at least you can live with yourself when you knew you put forth all the effort you possibly had in your body. If you go down swinging, it's okay to go down, but you've got to keep fighting and they have certainly done that. And move on to Championship Sunday. He gets the ride, is it gonna be enough? Look. 91 and a quarter, can he do it? It would have taken a special day from the bull, and, and unfortunately I think that's the circumstances and the cards they're gonna be dealt here. I don't think they're gonna have enough bull, but I do know they've got enough cowboy. I, I agree with you, Matt. But what else can you say about all these bull riders in this with these scores? He didn't get it, 87 and a half. Still an incredible bull ride for Jeremiah's. But with that, Oklahoma and Kansas City are sent packing. And number eight, Missouri, wins once again in the last chance game before they even take their final out. Kate Madsen stepping up big. What a weekend so far. You guys coming into the, at the bottom of the lake. You're going to Championship Sunday, Kate. Uh, yes, sir. This is my last bowl for two years. I'm going to be serving a, a mission for my church come December. I'm letting it all hang out on the line. We come to win that gold buckle. Uh, say something about, tell me about Ross Coleman, Luke Snyder, what they mean to you. Shoot, rough season, but they stayed positive and stayed behind us. You know, I give all the credit to them. I love them both very much. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you, sir. Kate.
What a standout young man for that team. And now leading their way to Championship Sunday. No one outside of the Missouri locker room had them in any fantasy bracket to be there on Sunday. Try and tell me otherwise. And now guess what? They're taking on Austin again as you're taking a look at that bracket. And then, of course, Texas is there with Arizona. For Cade Matson, ties a season high with 90 points. Said he's let it all hang out. He did it in Vegas. So it's going to be a rematch of the Gamblers and the Thunder in the semifinals. And then it's the Ridge Riders and the Rattlers going head to head. So make sure to join us on Championship Sunday right here on CBS Sports Network. It kicks off with Inside the PBR Team's Championship, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. And then right here inside T-Mobile Arena at 4 p.m. Eastern, where just a couple hours later, we'll be crowning the new PBR Team's Champion. Could this be another Cinderella story in the making for Missouri? They're proven they're gonna be right there in the fight. Well, one day to go here in Las Vegas, and you won't want to miss it because tomorrow we will wear the buckle to the champions of the 2023 Camping World PBR Team Series World Championship. Be sure to tune in at 4 p.m. Eastern for the final rounds. For Matt, Scott, Flint, Luke, Cody, and our entire crew, I'm Kate Harrison. This has been a presentation of the Professional Bull Riders in association with CBS Sports Network the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.